it's said that if you want to make God laugh, tell him you have a plan. Well, today we're going to be talking about how we develop the goals for this modern cabin that are very site specific and how we came up with the plans for building this house. Start y'all off with the drink. Texas sweet tea and sweet tea. Texas sweet tea in Colorado. Yep. In a previous video called Fear of the Unknown, we address the building permit process. And in that, we discuss that there is no adopted building code in this county. Well, that may cause you some concern thinking that this is just the Wild West and the builders here can just get away with building anything they want to any substandard. That cannot be any further from the truth. Far beyond a building code that is the minimum standard that you can get away with, the contractors here know that the climate is going to legislate far beyond any code what is going to be acceptable. Craftsmanship and building a reputation is what these contractors build on. By engineering and over-engineering, for far beyond what the national standard is. All right, so let's design a house. We're just gonna use a block here, and you know, what do we need? This is just a basic form, and let's start with that. Now, basic house, let's see, you're gonna want living room for your public space. You need a dining room, you need a bathroom. This house is gonna have two bedrooms, and we have to have a kitchen. But you don't want this to feel real small even though it is going to be small. So there's a couple of design things we can do to make that, that perception of a larger house. You can divide it into three. Hang on one second. All right. Let's make this easier. Okay, so now we've got three spaces. We need to have a public space, we need to have a utility space, and we need to have a private space. Two Texas sweet teas. All right. What's it gonna be for y'all today? We gotta eat. Chicken and waffles. Chicken and waffles. How about you? Uh, I'll take some hot wings. Hot wings? You want reaper wings or regular? I'll try the reaper. Reaper? All right. <laughs> when you meet with your architect or whoever's going to design your plans, or if you're going to design your plans yourself, you need to make a list. We call it a brief. Now, you take that list with you to the meeting and you address these, and your architect will make a plan off of your needs and your wants and your wishes. When you're building in this environment, it is harsh. We have a six foot depth of frost line. Sometimes we forget. Heat goes into cold. So it's very cold natured here. Oh, there can be snow up to five feet deep. Cold is down to negative 30, even down to negative 50 before. And that's why the contractors and the builders in this county have to build far better than what is necessary in the rest of the country. It's also very windy. The wind of three second gusts of 132 miles an hour. That is far beyond most what anybody will ever see, but it's a reality in this county. Now, seismic here is a seismic sea. It's not drastic, but we are in the Rocky Mountains, and on a daily basis, even though you can't feel them, there are recorded earthquakes. Privacy, there are other cabins around, so you need to address for privacy. Also, this is gonna be a self-built. We don't have a huge budget for this, and we don't need to. It's a part-time house. Low maintenance. I don't wanna to have to paint. I don't want to have to worry about things when I'm gone from here. Local sourced material. And it's just a responsibility that I want to take on. My wife says this. Make it comfortable. I don't want my feet to be cold 
and I won't enjoy my vacation. The views are on the list. We're in the mountains. It is beautiful here. We have huge mountains that are snow covered even in the summertime. They're beautiful. And to the south, that's where the wind is coming from, and that's also where your sun is coming from. We have mountains in that direction. We have mountains everywhere. We're in the Rocky Mountains. I also need to make this easy to winterize. When we leave, we need to button this thing up so it won't freeze. We want a small footprint. We don't need a McMansion up here. That being said, we also want a huge wow factor. We like modern. We like modern architecture. And this is an opportunity just to have some fun. I like having fun. I want to drive up and say, yep, I like it. And just put a smile on my face. That's a great way to start your vacation. Premium products, yes, they cost more. Let's talk about value. If you have to replace products, so you paid for them twice in the lifetime of the house, then you paid double. Making out of premium products, pay a little more up front and enjoy it the entire life of the home. That is value. We also want to exhibit forward thinking. Forward thinking on how to address needs and meet those needs in the best energy efficient manner. Low dependence on local workforce. These guys are gonna be busy. That's what we've been warned on at the permit process. So I have to be able to build this house all by myself. And lastly, like on the very beginning of the list, heat goes into cold. Who had the chicken and waffles? I had the chicken and waffles. Who had the hot wings? I want to move this back. This is where the kitchen and the utility room will be. So we have huge views of aspens and mountains. Let's back that up and put big windows and this will light up that living room space. We're realistic. There are other cabins around here and while we can't hide them all, by moving this exactly just right, we block a couple of the houses over here that we don't see, but we get to see the mountains. Put big windows to the south. That's where the sun is, and there's also views there. Also, it lets more light in. I'll have a glass door. I'll have more light. But you don't want to put too much windows. Over 30% in this UV will cook. Even though it's a high-performing house, you would cook by the heat gain that you'll get from the sun. But with that prevailing wind, having a front door here in the living room, I don't want to have to fight the wind while opening a door and snow blowing in. So let's back that up just a little bit too. And now we can put a living room door right here. Now we've got a living room, we've got a dining room, we've got the kitchen right off of it. And that's all wide open, there is no wall there. So we'll have the kitchen here up against this wall. This window right here, I want you to pay attention to this window because right below that window is the sink. We've got a line of electrical poles. What I've done by moving this a little bit and lining this up, looking out that window, instead of seeing 26 and a half telephone poles, I want them all lined up behind each other and I only want to see one of them. Just a better view. Plus there's great mountains up here. So one of the things about having a rectangle and not a lot of square footage, being a small house, the issue is here, structural integrity. We need it to be strong, there's a lot of wind here. So as we're facing the south, that prevailing wind of 132 miles an hour, we've got to protect against that. And if you have just a small footprint like this, you need to have shear walls. Now shear walls, are when you construct something so this doesn't fall over, because it's supported by this. And this doesn't fall over, because it's supported by this. So you have a shear wall with that wind dump, that prevailing wind coming this way, it's protected. 
That's the joy of moving this around where we can have a shear wall and it will protect us. By moving this, we have shear wall. And back here, we have shear wall protection. You have to have shear wall every 35 feet by code. Shear walls are what keep the house from the prevailing wind is coming from the south. Puffing and puffing and blowing this house down. And then now what we have left, by doing that, we now have a protected back porch. So it's out of the sun in the summertime and it's also out of the wind. Very comfortable. This would be boring. Let's spice it up a little bit. So how are they hot wings? They're hotter than hell. All right. I already know that I'm gonna be using a standing seam metal roof. I love them, they perform well. It is a premium product, but I think it's worth it. They're just great, they're very low maintenance. So. Can I use some more tea? Yes, please. <laughs> this right here is gonna be vaulted. There's some other things to address. Since I have to build this alone, this is a super long length of metal roof. I want to show you this sideways. This is actually too long for one guy to be able to handle by himself. And I also got to contend with the wind on this site. So working with metal up on a roof, you just have a wing every time you're taking up a new piece. But if this piece is too long, it will bend on me. So what I've done is I've dropped this. This will be the dining room area and I can support that across and I can separate these two pieces of roofing. I can easily get this span and this span. That way it'll be two smaller pieces easier for me to handle. That's our block house. That's just a good start. There's going to be more details later. More to work out. On every build, it's important to come in on time and on budget. Your bank account will appreciate it and time will reward you. The way to do that is to make a plan, make a good plan, stick to that plan and don't change that plan, and don't waffle. So now go build it. Better. Thanks for watching the video. Go ahead and put your comments and questions down below. And go ahead and click on that subscribe, like, and share, and that little bell. It'll keep you up to date with the series and the latest videos. Uh, go build it. Keeps it from huffing and pluffing. What's the play next for? Some people cry. Uh, like, uh.